today I have friend of the show Richard Otten on the line with me. We had a little chat when the whole COVID-19 virus hit and it turned out that over in the Netherlands he was working with a company that was producing a white paper which was all about thinking different in times of crisis. So I got him on the show to talk to me about the white paper and what it recommends to business owners in this industry. Welcome to episode 28. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. So I'm very happy to have on the podcast today my colleague from the Netherlands, Richard Otten has been working in this industry for many years now. He has a couple of uh, businesses and responsibilities and they include uh, glamping.nl and also he provides media services to campsites and glamp sites across uh, Europe. So I was very pleased when we spoke, he got in touch and he had been working with Lux and Tenton to come up with a white paper, a paper of guidance to help people at this time who have sites or who want to have sites to think through what they need to do to prepare for the reopening of this industry when this virus has got under control. So Richard very kindly came onto the episode today to talk through his perspective, what he's seeing in the industry as far as where he's located and what he's hearing from businesses over in Europe and of course the guidance in the white paper and where you can get a copy for yourself. Richard you've been involved in this white paper which is titled Thinking Differently in Times of Crisis and I've only just had a look at the white paper because it literally is hot off the press yesterday or the day before something like that Mm -hmm. and the paper is talking about tips for campsites and holiday parks in how they can deal with this crisis and how they can take action for the uh, the new economy that is coming out now. It's actually from when we talked earlier, in, when this crisis first hit, and you talked about a one meter or one and a half meter economy. And I've been talking about that ever since. And in the UK, it's two meters. People have to you know isolate from each other and have distancing of two meters. And so we're calling it the two meter economy. So firstly, tell me, how did this white paper come about and what's your involvement been in it? Well, um, as the owner of uh, Blogs for Travel, which is a a content marketing bureau in Holland, uh, we are uh, very uh, involved with uh, our client Luxetenten, which of course is a manufacturer of uh, safari tents worldwide. And I think uh, they were... um, there has been a takeover within the company, I think it was one and a half year ago, and they uh, really want to expand. And of course, they did a very good job. They were visible everywhere and every fair in all the world. Um, and at the same time, I think for their organization, they already, well, made the contracts, etc., for the preparation of the season. And then, of course, this happened in, in March, which is the, the most terrible month, I think, for all the season uh, and, and holiday, uh, well, the whole holiday industry. So I think Luxetenten took up their share and said, well, we, we want to give some information because everybody is in search for good information uh, about all these uh, measures been taken by the governments uh, within Europe and also worldwide, but mostly within Europe, which is very differently, of course. We do, we do not see any European guidelines for the moment. And every country is on his own. So, um, yeah, this white paper wants to help uh, glamping owners and campsite owners 
in their uh, quest to uh, to have good information to prepare and also give some insights that we uh, found uh, in, in 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 a couple of sources. So yeah, it's it's public. It's uh, written for uh, for this industry that we are involved in to help each other because I think uh, well you 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 will agree with me on that. We we have to share information. We have to share knowledge uh, specifically in this uh, time of crisis. Absolutely, and so. What country are you based in? For the listeners, tell a little yeah. bit about where you're based. We are based in Holland, uh, like I said, uh, as, a, as a marketing bureau. But um, we also have one website we own, which is glamping.nl, which is the biggest uh, website uh, for uh, people to look up on their uh, glamping holiday, let's say. And we work a lot, up, uh, a lot with tour operators and individual campsite owners uh, within Europe to, to, um, well, to get question and demand on our website. But at the same time, we also help, help companies like Luxetenten uh, in their uh, social media uh, strategy and their content strategy. So that is my role in this, uh, in this part. So what are you witnessing where you are? Are you still in lockdown? Are there still significant changes to your lifestyle? Um, yes and no. Uh, of course, Holland did had a lockdown, but they called it an intelligent lockdown. So they said, well, we're not going to give everybody a paper uh, with evidence if you want to be on the street, like in Spain, Italy and France. It is more like uh, we see in Germany, uh, Denmark and maybe Sweden as well. It's like more that kind of uh, lockdown. So everybody has, has to be at home. Uh, but there were exceptions and a lot of uh, uh, stores uh, were still open, but of course not the bars and uh, especially, specifically um, campsites were still open. I think that is a, a also important to know that in a lot of countries, of course, campsites were closed, were really closed by governments. In our country, it was not the case. Uh, only a couple of regions where the hospitals were not able to take care of let's say a bigger crowd so they said well that region has to be in a total lockdown uh, but of course we are now seven weeks further already in this crisis so now we are opening up again uh, as everyone else I think a little bit in Europe and uh, as of Monday uh, 11 uh, May there will be schools again open um, there will be a little bit more uh, open openness in in the country and then the first of june there will be more open and what is now announced is that the first of july campsites can be totally open also with their toilet buildings etc so we are looking towards uh, a summer that is possible but that is of course if the virus is is, is still contained in a way they are, that we are doing now so that is with big uh, insecurity so that's actually very different to our situation in the UK. Yeah, how is Everything that? Everything is shut. <laughs> Everything is shut. And we have no notice at the moment of when we will be coming out of a phased lockdown. And we are being given hints that in terms of campsites and glamping and uh, unique holiday rentals and, and holiday accommodation, we won't be able to open any of it until July, June, July. So, but we have no guidance yet. So everyone's still very much in the lockdown frame of mind. And there is right. now, you know, a great deal of concern in those areas in such as the Southwest in the UK, which is Cornwall and Devon, where the majority of their business is tourism so yes this is a very big impact in terms of the economy so what in terms of uh, what you, is happening for you and in Europe is there anything positive to think through hmm. well I think the word positive we have to downgrade it let's say um, nothing at the moment I think for tourism and for the industry is positive but if you look into the fact that we are in this crisis already for a couple of weeks and there are things opening up a little bit that gives a glance to hold on to i think it we, we have to put it like this so uh, in that case what is positive like i said in holland we see that uh, campsites can be open i have a positive feeling that uh, hopefully the European Union will give uh, the, uh, in, in, in mid-May some guidelines uh, towards the, the, all the countries that within the Schengen uh, countries there will be open boundaries but of course it will be very insecure how many people will take the risk to travel to another country because of course if the uh, 
the, the, the borders will be closed. Well, that, that pretty much ends a lot of things and especially campsites and glamping owners that are very into uh, accepting uh, people from another country, of course, like in France, uh, you, will, you will have in France a lot of campsite and glamping owners uh, with a majority of English, Dutch, uh, Belgian, German uh, customers. So if that stays away, then of course the whole uh, business has to turn towards domestic holiday, which can be possible because I think in every country that will be the case. Uh, and that maybe also a lot of people that normally go on a cruise or they take a big uh, trip towards the America or uh, uh, another country outside of Europe, they will stay within the country and then maybe yeah, discover uh, the campsite. So in the end, it, it could be a benefit uh, for the glamping and camping industry, but you really have to look um, well to, to, through all the mess uh, towards the prospect and, the, and, the, and hopefully future that will be there. But of course, I think that will be the big question now. Everybody's waiting for um, European guidelines. And of course, within the next two, three weeks, what will happen with the virus? Do we have another uh, vague coming up? Or is there a possibility that we can maintain the, these numbers of, of people getting ill and getting in, hospi getting in hospital uh, and, and the economy uh, can open up a little bit? Because then I think the summer will be possible, but of course in, 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 a, in a shape that will be very less than, than, it what, than it, what it would be. Because it would be a very good year, like we just discussed before the, the podcast. Yeah, 2020 was, was a, an exceptional year, I think, for, uh, for a lot of people. And now, of course, everybody uh, uh, thinks at a certain moment there will be a crisis because that is normal. But I think nobody could anticipate on this crisis that is this deep and this destructive, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we had some terrible news from the Bank of England yesterday, warning that we are due to have the deepest recession on record since 1706. So this wow. is based on the lockdown ending in June, uh, between June and September. Yeah. But on the positive side, it expects that it could rebound to 15% early in 2021 and then hopefully get back to normal pretty much by the end of 2021. So um, things aren't terribly, terribly bleak, but in the you know, short term, this is going to be very impactful on a lot of companies. And, and so this is why I, I grabbed onto the opportunity to hear about your white paper when I heard that um, it was being uh, put together. Yeah, what do you think, uh, because of course it's, it's a big document uh, in total, what were maybe the highlights that you uh, pointed out? Because of course maybe some information for you was already, well, you knew it or you, you heard about it, but were there some articles that were different or new to, for you? Well, the, the thing that I really liked about the overall feel of it is that it was giving advice, but it wasn't being too uh, prescriptive. So it wasn't saying you must do this, you must do that. It was giving really good sound suggestions on what people could do to take a look at how they open their sites in uh, the, the coming months when they're allowed to, when they come out of lockdown. And one of the things also that I, f I found very beneficial was where it talks about looking at the cost benefit analysis for individual sites. Right. Because not every site will think that it's worth them opening. Maybe no. they have gone into uh, some kind of um, business kind of sleep. They've uh, turned everything off. Uh, their staff are in furlough or they have chosen not to employ their seasonal staff and they may decide that this year they just aren't going to focus on opening and they're going to pause until next year so sure. well, that, that, that's what I liked about the document that it talks about you have to make the right decision for you and your business and where yep. you are in the world um, for the moment, I talk with a lot of uh, owners, of course, and I think it's very depending on the region, your customers, uh, how many uh, accommodations you have with, with, uh, with your own uh, bathroom in it or not. So yeah, that, that, that are all questions you have to think about. And of course, if you have a lot of costs opening up uh, and it's only for a couple of weeks, uh, yeah, you, you have to question yourself if it's really the worth the effort or that you will postpone everything that you have towards next year because 
like I said before, it could be a benefit for the glamping and camping industry in the end. If we sort this crisis uh, altogether, uh, then I think there will be a, a lot of people uh, with a big desire towards nature, towards sustainability. And I think glamping is spot on on that. So we have to be hopeful. We have to, well, stay together in this crisis and then, and then sort it uh, together. And then, and, and then we will have a good business. But of course, yeah, maybe for some businesses that will be too late, uh, depending on how long this will take, of course. Absolutely. And, and it's about putting things in place to be able to ride out the storm of the recession. And that's why I've been providing a lot of uh, free training in my Facebook group for people to understand how they can take action now while they are in a pause state to prepare for either opening up or at the very least to think about what they're going to do for their own business model and location. But it was very uh, enlightening and also encouraging when I was very fortunate to be able to attend a lecture from a uh, worldwide uh, economist called Ian Golding and this man has got credentials as long as my arm and he hmm. in his last book he predicted that the next recession the next worldwide economic crisis would be linked to a pandemic and so, of course, everyone's very eager to hear his opinion on what might happen next. So I was in this lecture and without any prompting from me or questions from me, he announced that he felt that any, any business that was able to provide a, an experience where people could come together in nature and do those things that they've missed the most, such as being together with friends and family in a social environment in nature where they can wind down and de-stress and all of those things, go hiking, all of the things that we've missed after being in lockdown will survive right. if yep. they can navigate this immediate short-term crisis so in a way that was really encouraging what do you think about that i, I agree totally and uh what would would also be beneficial because i remembered we talked about that uh in, in an earlier podcast is that small uh glamping owners based on a small structure and and not like the the, the big mass campsites they are more uh, adapting and maybe faster adapting towards uh, the, the the opening up of the economy and then in the end will provide uh, a better service like you say towards the, the the demand of the of the of the changing uh, tourists of course because I think in the end the corona crisis is very uh, bad but in a, in a way also a wake-up call to change drastically our, our way in travel because yeah we already talked about that and it could be like a, a game changer, like a tipping point in that uh, demand for a lot of people. Uh, mm. Not going in the plane anymore to, to Spain, mm. but maybe stay in your own country and go to the south of England and then stay in a safari tent. Why not? Mm. Yeah, especially as there are predictions that those prices of tickets are going Will rise. to increase yeah. yeah absolutely and it's only to be expected there's lots of talk of companies going out of business there's going to be less flights less you know tickets available and and obviously if you've got that amount of supply reducing then they're, they're going to put the prices up and right yeah it's it's going to change things but as you say i wonder if this could actually push us all in the direction of making some better choices choices that will help the environment that will help the impact of our you know activities and behavior on the environment and we've collectively seen that during this lockdown and shift in our behaviors behavior yeah and the pollution levels going down that have been measured from some from space and before this i was thinking you know what can i do and how will my changing my activities and being more eco-friendly how could that possibly have a positive impact on the environment right and now we see it <laughs> and now we see it absolutely so now i feel much more motivated to do yeah. bigger things and change bigger things I, I agree but at the same time of course we have to be realistic that when it will be possible to to go on a, on a cheap ticket towards spain or turkey people will do that of course we we uh, i think it, it's uh it's it's uh, optimistic to think that 
a crisis will change behavior in the long run. But then at the same time, there are some aspects of this crisis, like a domestic holiday, which is now uh, being, uh, yeah, you cannot do differently. So you will have to do it. And then you will discover that, that like here in Holland, for example, we have beautiful nature, etc. So I think it will be in this way that we will uh, see that, like I said, glamping uh, and campsites will uh, profit in the end. But of course, they will have to uh, navigate through this crisis. And I think one of the things which is also stating in the white paper that online visibility uh, is one of the topics we talk about in the white paper is very important uh, even now and maybe better especially now you have to invest in your website you have to invest in your social media strategy to be uh, visible uh, for these customers especially because you will touch a lot of customers which were never customers before yeah. um, so you have to think outside of the box and, and, and try to adapt your uh, organization. And like I said, if you have a smaller organization, then you will be more adaptive uh, towards which is now the new right reality. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is the way things are going, isn't it? That we are moving. And partly this uh, whole crisis has been a catalyst for making this happen faster for some people. We exactly. are moving offline to online. People are now using it more to search for all kinds of things and changing their behavior, how they search for their holidays and their future stays in unique spaces. So we all have to be there to make sure that people see our business and that we are visible. And without that, I, I fear some businesses just won't survive or at least their costs will go up significantly as they just rely heavily on the online travel agents. Right. But they haven't particularly behaved very well, the online travel agents during this crisis. Some of them have been amazing, but others have been very bad. Yep. And so I think that in itself is going to shift a lot of people's thinking in how they feel they need to go forward to get their bookings. Yeah. And hopefully that will be of benefit to them because they'll have less expenses, less commission to pay on each booking. True. Um, but they do need to learn new skills to be able to get their business online and to get it visible. Yeah, that, that's very important. And of course, uh, I can understand that as a Glam site owner and you are affected now but a lot of, with a lot of people wanting to change the date of their holiday, asking questions, etc. So you're very heavily involved with running the business and surviving. But at the same time, don't forget to communicate. Don't forget the marketing because it's always one of the first things that will be cut off. And of course, I can understand that you will not put any money at the moment in, in Facebook or Google AdWords. Um, but social media, uh, let's say your own uh, content that you put out there is, is for free. The only thing is that you have to invest this time. And we see a significant, a significantly uh, difference between campsites and glampings that are already heavily uh, visible on Facebook and Instagram, for example, that have uh, invested in that for many years already, they are now in, in, in advance of other campsites that haven't done that. Because of course, for the moment, the only connection that you have with your customer is by phone or email, but then it's all negative. Like I said, it's about changing the dates, et cetera. So on social media, you can do, you can, you can, Put out another message like an online animation program or um, I don't know show, show show some images of your uh, of your of your company so that is very important and at the same time what we see now in Holland is of course that based on the press conference uh, last uh, Tuesday they said well domestic holiday could be possible like I mentioned before uh, from from the first of July so that will lead up to a run on, on new bookings for the, for the season. So at a certain point, you have to also invest again in visibility uh, with, with AdWords and Facebook, etc. Yeah. So yeah, be, be very, um, be careful with that, but at the same time, don't, yeah, don't, uh, don't cut it off total. I, th I, th I think that's a wrong decision. Yes, and, and that paid advertising, because you can switch it on and off like a tap, it's right. really important to be prepared to do that at, at the beginning so you can start getting the bookings coming in uh, when you're ready to launch and open the doors again to your customers and and 
at the moment, we all have time to think through our ads, our visual assets that we'll put to it, the type of wording that we might use. And one of the things that I'm telling to uh, people who are in my Facebook group is, you know, think about sketching that out now. Think about getting that with you know, your Google Ads account, your Facebook Ads account, getting it endorsed, authorized by the platform so that you're ready to hit the button, you're ready to go exactly. as soon yeah. as you're able to. Yeah. Um, you don't have to run it now. You can have it on pause and you can have a very low budget, but it's about exactly. making sure it's there and ready. And these are all same, things we can do to prepare. Exactly. The same with writing a blog. You can already prepare your content because you will yeah. know that at a certain moment, uh, like you're saying now in England, we, you are not ready for, uh, for like opening up from the lockdown, but it will be there eventually. So you can already prepare yeah. for that. Yeah, sure. So how is the animation that you provide, how is that used by sites? Well, what we see now is that in Holland during the holiday of the, well, May holiday it's called, it's the last uh, two weeks, uh, there were a couple of campsites, uh, like I said, well, every campsite was open, but also open with some customers. Uh, <laughs> to put it in perspective, maybe 10 or 15%, of course, like on a normal uh, level, okay. but with some children, and then we did, like animation on distance. So it was not a mini club that you would go into and that there will be uh, creativity, but it will be more like the animation team uh, is, is um, uh, distributing all the, the, the things to do for the children uh, at the mobile homes at the safari tent. So that is something that we did already. And the first sites were very positive. Uh, the people liked it. They were very enthusiastic that, oh my God, there was something uh, happening and we are, we are coming to the campsite and you even have animation. So it was higher expectation than what they thought. So that's always positive. And of course, at the same time, uh, we made like this COVID corona protocol uh, to make sure that what we do is is correct uh, concerning all the hygiene uh, measures that you have to have to take, and I think that's the same thing you have to do when you have like guests on your campsite. Um, make sure that your protocol or your all your measures that you have to do that that you are prepared for that as well, because I think that will be very important not only for the check that will be done by the government to see if you are in order. Uh, by 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 what 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 the measures are in every country because of course in every country it's a little bit different, uh, but also to make the guest feel secure. I think that's the only way to attract guests in the end because they need to come and they need to feel secure where they are. Uh, so animation is possible, but like I said, on distance and differently and online. Um, and in that perspective, you can also say like an online check-in is already possible. Uh, you you can really do a lot of things already, uh, but you have to think differently than what you did before. So uh, in all that uh, elements that you like check-in, um, hygiene, uh, animation, uh, you, you all have to rethink it. Mm, absolutely. And I think that having that in mind, what we've talked about earlier, about that one and a half meter economy or the two meter economy is a right. really great way of putting it and summarizing it. That think about everything that you have to do that allows people to keep that distance between each other on site and around the facilities and to, to help keep them safe, but more than anything, to help them keep that sense that they are not fearful of uh, what they could get, you know, if they came into contact with the virus. But that's one of the things that we have struggled with the most, and I think a lot of us will struggle with in the future, which is that fear. Right. And uh, I think yeah. that potentially could stop people from having a holiday because they're fearful. And at the same time, maybe also owners that are fearful as well. I've, I've talked to owners that said, well, I, I don't want to open up because I don't want to have that responsibility if something will happen. But at the same yeah. time, yeah, we have to try to be realistic and stay positive at the same time um, and see day by day or maybe week by week how things are going. So it, it's not yeah. wise at the moment to look any further than one month because you don't yeah. know. So you can make yourself very uh, depressed maybe by looking three, four months ahead. 
Mm. But, you, but you just don't know. But mm. as an entrepreneur, you have to anticipate and try to see, okay, the, these are the different scenarios that could be possible. Mm. And I think, like I said before, um, every campsite or every glamping owner has a different approach in that. Can I open up or not? Mm. Do I have uh, people from another country or not, etc.? Mm. But yeah, you, you also have the uh, respons- responsibility to look out for your own business. So yeah, that, that's why we wrote this white paper to give that advice mm. uh, and, and be a partner. I think Luxa Tenton also uh, wants to point that out. Uh, it's not only to provide the safari tent as a manufacturer. It's also about sharing this as, a, as, a, as, a, as an industry. Mm. Um, I think okay. one thing is written down in the white paper as well, and I couldn't agree more. Relationship is gold. Mm. Um, yeah. At the moment, what I see now is that everybody that has a good relationship with one another, they accept that, yeah, we are all feeling the pain and we have to, uh, come out together. Mm. So I relationship think- is very important. Absolutely. And yet we are, all experiencing this in our own individual ways as well so we have to be very thoughtful about each other and considerate of each other and I know that in certainly in my Facebook group people are being that but I think that that challenge will come when we were talking earlier about you know there are three things here there is the owner of the site there is the guest who likes to visit the site and then there is the community in which the site is located right and those those are three key areas that need to be considered because there is fear in the community as well that when the tourists come back will they bring the virus exactly so yeah. that, you know there is a uh, a lot of elements we need to all consider and this isn't going to be easy but there is a lot of support out there and I think it's fantastic that you've done this white paper and how can they get hold of a copy would it be okay for me to include a copy with the show notes for this episode sure Uh, I think uh, the more people read it and can share it uh, the better so I would propose that uh, yeah, where we can provide and share this information, we uh, we we have to do it. So uh, in the in the show notes, of course, but you can also share it in the group that you have on Facebook. Yes. Um, of course, um, yeah. Some may apply on 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 a specific country, but I think uh, in general, all the advices are given uh, for every glampsite owner and for for every campsite owner out there to to make like a roadmap. <laughs> let's say it like this. Yeah. to uh, to attack this crisis which is ahead of us yeah absolutely and i think it's fantastic that everyone is pulling together to try and get through this so thank you so much for coming on the podcast this morning i really appreciate you giving your time and i know that anyone who downloads the white paper will be incredibly grateful so i thank you on behalf of them yeah and you know good luck richard if there's anything that they want to ask, of course, they can uh, contact me. I think best way is maybe on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, full name Richard Otten, of course. And if there's any question which isn't answered, well, like you said, it's, it's not 100% full of information. Maybe something is left out. But yeah, please, if there's, if there's any feedback, uh, please let me know. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Take Thanks care. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So to download your copy of the white paper, just go to the show notes for this episode, which is inspiredcamping.com forward slash 028, as this is episode 28. It'd be really good to have your feedback. I know Richard and also Lux Tenton would be really happy to have your feedback uh, about the white paper and anything else that you've experienced during this lockdown and also about your thoughts for the future. If you want to get in touch, then you can do that through Inspired Camping, but you can also go to my site over on inspiredcourses.com. There's all kinds of tools and resources over there that I've made available to anyone who is struggling at this time, who wants to prepare for the release of lockdown and getting the tourism industry back on track. So you can find that over on inspiredcourses.com forward slash tools. Finally, if you want to be part of the Facebook community who are really pulling together at the moment to give each other as much support as possible, just go on over to inspiredcourses.com forward slash Facebook and that is where you request your membership and come on in because we're all there and we're ready to help. You shouldn't be doing this on your own. Take care and see you in the next episode.